live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone, live here in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in the hang space for VMworld 2016. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest, Aditya Sadhu, is the CEO and co-founder of Com.io, which was acquired by Nutanix. So he now is an employee of Nutanix, Series A funded startup acquired by Nutanix, wearing the Nutanix logo on the jacket. Good product placement, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. You're now CUBE alumni, welcome to the club. So uh, congratulations on the acquisition, exit right out of the gate, the Series A. More importantly, uh, great team at Nutanix, you're joining. Um, very technical, doing some great stuff. Stu's been following them, wikibon has been tracking their history. SiliconANGLE, the CUBE, they've been on since day one. Been great success story. Um, but the engineering is not yet done. So before we get into some of the deep dive conversations, talk about Com.io, why did they acquire you what was the interest? Obviously DevOps is hot, you guys do a little DevOps stuff, I want to get into that. But what were you guys doing? How does that fit into Nutanix? Sure, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for your uh, best wishes. Uh, why, what Calm.io was doing was building uh, application-centric DevOps tooling for any kind of hybrid clouds. And I think to why Nutanix acquired Calm.io or why we joined Nutanix as well, I think I would answer that in three parts. Uh, first of all, is a design first philosophy that UX and UI is really important. We have to build beautiful interfaces, elegant ones. Uh, the second is a shared vision towards that how infrastructure and IT should be run down the road in the coming world, how the, where is the world going over time. And the third is the same, I would say, insurgent mentality <laughs> of going and disrupting the status quo. And looking at problems from a new angle. We still want to solve problems, but we just don't want to have a cookie cutter approach, but say, how is the best fresh way to solve this problem? What's interesting, yesterday, we always have great conversations on theCUBE with uh, technical tech athletes, as we call them, and also executives. But the thing that is coming out of the technical uh, uh, conversations is that a hacker mentality is what's going on because you can't standardize what you don't understand. And so I want to bring in that perspective, because the UX, UI stuff is well known, people understand that, you got to design great interfaces, which, which you guys are doing, but as you guys solve the complexities of the future, IOT right around the corner, the data center transformation, a lot of stuff's unknown, so you got to kind of do some hacking. What are the areas, my hacking, I use that kind of as a, uh, a globalized term, to significantly significant, say that you got to do stuff differently to understand that, that mentality you're talking about. What are some of the areas of complexity that you see out there that you guys are involved in, uh, Calm.io and now Nutanix, around understanding the beast before you tame it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things, can you share some insight onto what you see? Sure, I think a lot of the complexity, or you could say the challenges in the modern systems come from where the system interfaces are, where two systems overlap, because you know the, the fun stuff always happens on the edges, not on the center. So a lot of the complexity comes from when different systems interact with each other. You have your, and to uh, just belabor the point, that is one of the great things Nutanix did, where they eliminated the interface between storage and virtualization and said this is one seamless fabric now that you have. So I think uh, how we think about it and how we have thought about it is to go uh, build something quickly and then iterate a lot, listen to a lot of lot to a customer feedback, have lots of customer empathy, because finally we are here not to create complexity, but to manage it. That should be our job, you know, not, not go add another interface tools into already 20 things that uh, an infrastructure person has to go and do. So look at the boundaries where systems interface, uh, play around with them, iterate very rapidly, get lots of customer feedback. That's been our approach on dealing with system, understanding the beast. Yeah. You know? And DevOps has always been kind of an emerging culture. Let me go back seven years or so, since theCUBE started, we've been, certainly the early days of cloud was, you know, hardcore full stack developers doing everything. And that was a great, great, now, now it's going mainstream. So as DevOps goes mainstream, and certainly VMware's message here at the show is cross cloud, 
cross cloud architecture, cross cloud foundation. That speaks to this complexity of dealing with multiple clouds, which again, to your systems overlap point, is unknown and complex. Unknown and complex. What's your thoughts there? I mean, how do you tame that beast? I mean, Azure is another shoe that's going to drop. Amazon's winning, um, public cloud game, and you got other, you know, Google and other clouds out there. That's going to be a problem set for customers. What's your thoughts on the inter-cloud relationship for the data center? Yes, I think that, uh, I completely agree with you that, uh, and these are some of that, you know, DevOps has sort of started off as a little trend, but now got on mainstream and the DevOps conferences, I remember when we started, DevOps was this niche <laughs> market that people were like, ah, oh, what kind of stuff. So I think the challenge in running a hybrid environment, like if as much as we like to pretend uh, the public cloud is not going away, the private cloud is not going away, both are going to coexist for a very long time because they have different workloads that suit different, you know, OPEX versus CAPEX kind of questions. Yeah. And then the pace of acceleration has really picked up in the last two or three years. Like we had containers come in two or three years ago. Docker came in and started changing the way people are doing stuff. Unikernels have started moving a major uh, inroads into there. Docker was two years ago, Unikernels are now, that they're breaking out of the niche category. Uh, so the, given the pace of change and innovation and new technologies and stuff coming in, it's going to get pretty complicated because we will have multiple cloud vendors, uh, our legacy infrastructure, modern infrastructure, containers, Unikernels, VMs, bare metal, everything thrown in together. And I think what will finally slay this dragon, so to speak, is focus more on the application stuff, the application mobility. How do I best leverage my current infrastructure but not get vendor locked in? Right. How do I build an application mobility fabric in the enterprise cloud which allows me to seamlessly and with as minimal effort, I, I don't think it'll be zero effort anytime yeah. soon, move things around into the different clouds. All right, so Atito, we, we had a good conversation yesterday with uh, Sunil from N Nutanix and Pujan from, from Pernix uh, Data, a little bit about why they're making some of the acquisitions, you know, software, that insurgent mindset that you, you talked about. C can we uh, get a little tactical? Talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, your product as it is today, you know, what customers were using it for, does that interact with Nutanix, and uh, also a little bit about, you know, your team itself and the skill set that they bring uh, into the Nutanix team. Sure. So what Carmyo uh, set out to do is to bring an application first approach to automation on any kind of hybrid clouds. And especially with a focus on enterprise uh, cloud issues, which is compliance and governance. That unless we go marry DevOps with all the control and things that an enterprise needs, we will not be able to make major inroads there. Uh, so that's how Kamayo started Evolved. A bunch of customers use it in India and US. Uh, India is where we started, though we had a Silicon Valley presence soon enough, last two years. Uh, there's the National Stock Exchange of India, which is the biggest stock exchange, which runs their entire automation and IT on this. Uh, there are large e-commerce players like Snapdeal, I mean, people who run tens and thousands of servers. So all in all, Kamayo manages close to 60,000 servers across all customers and different kind of use cases. Some are more next-gen web scale companies, some, as I said, banks, insurance companies, stock exchanges, I mean, talk about mission critical uh, in that sense. And coming together, uh, I think, is that how do we tackle the enterprise cloud in a holistic way, right from bottom of the stack to the top of the stack? How do we bring some of the more application focus on it? Yeah, so, you know, we always get into discussions about kind of DevOps itself. Is it Ops Dev, is it DevOps, Cloud Ops, how does that fit in? When I hear the term enterprise, uh, and you talk about things like governance, that, a lot of that's kind of on the operations side uh, of things there. Can, can you speak to kind of that dynamic of the, you know, the developer, you know, operations, DevOps, how, how you're bringing that forward? Sure. I think DevOps is a change in mindset more than any specific technology or methodology. It is that we are going to, one, manage our infrastructure as code, apply best practices from engineering, version controlling, doing peer reviews, and so on. And also at the same time, at a large scale, when you, when you are running IT for 10,000 people and supporting business applications that cannot go down, that are the times that you need the traditional enterprise uh, you know, governance and compliance into it. 
so i do not think i think this is an artificial boundary that has there's a that there is an it ops and there is a devops it's finally a developer mindset applied to operations and we need to build seamless tools so both use cases can be satisfied in one shot yeah i totally agree with that by the way i think this the and they've called it in the past consumerization of it Pat Gelsinger was on yesterday, said IT's flying from the nest, implying that IT isn't just a department anymore. So if you take, a, like you mentioned, design philosophy, there are other philosophies now that have to be native in the mindset of everybody. So IT kind of has to be kind of embedded in all aspects of it. So that is a DevOps approach. So it's, it is operational. It is um, operational. Reliability-wise, certainly there's going to be a need for that five nines, but it's going to be more of a development focus, and we're seeing that. With that being said, the data center <laughs> has a lot of stuff in it, right? So <laughs> it's got a lot of legacy, and the legacy is the complexity. That is the beast, in my opinion. I think it's the legacy, but the legacy is a beast that's maintained. But, but everyone's pushing for this digital transformation. So that's the dream, you know. Cloud is going to have all these benefits. But it's not necessarily true that public cloud does have great benefits, but trying to replicate that on-prem has been a challenge because of the legacy. Is that... Uh, an infrastructure issue, Stu. I know you've been covering this as well. I mean, where's the pro where's the hot spot? If you had to narrow it down and kind of look at the the engine that tweaked the engine of IT and data center to free IT up, where's that pressure point in your mind? Hmm. That's a very good question, uh, and and I think it gets to the root of the complexity. That why are we here? So first of all, I think legacy is always going to be there. Yeah. Today's modern infrastructure. 10 years down the line is going to be the new legacy. Uh, you know, so legacy is not going away anytime soon. I think the complexity comes from the silos that we have built up because of traditional ways that IT was run. We have a storage silo, or we had a storage silo, we had a compute silo and a network silo. And the handover between, say, these teams was through a ticketing system. I want something, network to do something, I go log a ticket and they go do yeah. things for me. And you cannot work at you know, web scale or modern agility speeds with that kind of approach. I think the critical part that is missing is tooling because the infrastructure systems are good. Virtualization does work. Hyperconvergence does work. Where the gap so far, I feel, is that how do we bring all these teams together to work on common tooling, which is generic enough that it solves all use cases, but no one sort of left out, you know, no one short changed that this is not the best uh, style of tool I would have wanted to use. So just to bring all of these teams together, have them work holistically, there should only be one IT team. Just does, does everything. It, of course, they have specializations. Aditya, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great, great to have you on. Welcome to theCUBE. Um, and congratulations on your uh, successful exit of your, of your startup now with the big company, Nutanix, which by the way, still classically is a startup, but it's growing so fast. It's soon to be IPO'd. Uh, we'll see how that, how that works. Uh, we'll get, I wish we had D-Raj on, but he had to go to India uh, for some family matters. Um, my final question for you to end the segment is, what are you going to bring back from, the t t from VMworld this year to the team uh, your friends and your colleagues, what are you going to share with them as you leave Vegas? What's going to be the takeaway for you? That's a very good question. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he stumped on the queue. Uh, yeah, John, he, you know, he, he just had his company acquired here and you got the lights of Vegas and everything going on here. So, uh, yeah. uh, Aditya, maybe, maybe you know, just, just share with us kind of you know, reaction and excitement yeah. of your team. Sure, I mean, don't let, let me take a gander yeah. at that question right. anyway. It's uh, a cube, it's all, it's all I think we all free form. The one thing I'm going to bring back is the customer hunger for innovation not about technologies, not about announcements, not about plans, but how much hunger there is, the hallway conversations we have been having, the coffee conversations I've been having with people, like, you know, what is the problem you have right now? Where do you spend your time? Where is the pain coming from? That hunger, because I think that, as long as we solve that, everything else will follow naturally. Yeah, and the technologies are solid right now. Like you said, the infrastructure is working. It's just not efficient. It's and it's about yeah. some new stuff's coming in, so it's it's all goodness. I mean, to me, I see a very strong market here. So, congratulations! Thanks for spending the time. This is the Cube live at VMworld in the Hang Space at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. You're watching the Cube at VMworld 2016. Be right back.